There you go. Welcome to the stream, everybody. <laughs> Hopefully everyone can hear me. I'm joined by Natalie tonight. Good evening, everyone. If we can get a quick audio check from everybody, make sure you can hear me and you can hear Natalie all right. And uh, you should hear um, the dulcet tones of the game in the background as well. We are being heard. AV is good. Yeah, we're being heard. We're being heard. This is what matters. So, Excellent. we're looking at a bit of Rhine Raw Roston tonight. So I thought we would go uh, westbound. Yeah, let's go westbound. Matt, are you driving? Yes. Matt is driving tonight. Uh, I was driving last night, so it's Matt's turn tonight. I'm driving tonight. Driving everybody mad. <laughs> Slash up the wall, you know. Put usual ending on here. Pink mouse hype. <laughs> Oh dear. So what were you driving yesterday, Natalie? I was driving uh, the 377 on the East Coastway, and I also gave the, uh, cla is it Class 66? Oh, the Shed, yes. Yeah, I gave that one a go as well, which was challenging, but definitely enjoyable. I do quite like the Shed. It's, uh, the 377 is good fun to drive as well, and the Brighton route is, is just, it's, it's nice, and it's a nice pace, which is... Yeah. Uh, You've got plenty to do, but uh, you can also take your time a bit. Yeah, I um, almost missed a couple of stops a few times, but not completely overshot a little bit once or twice. I never do that. That's fine. I never do that. Yeah, no, exactly. You never do that. No, it's... I've not got a reputation at all for doing that at all. You do not. No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was actually really good fun. Yeah, really um, and that particular route was actually recommended to me by the community, so I can see why they recommended it now. Yes. Uh, Liam, what safety systems are there today? All the safety systems. Ooh. I don't drive German trains without turning all the safety systems on. Nebworth uh, Geek Motto just said. Yeah, something like that anyway. Yeah. Something like that. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's in the past <laughs> somewhere in... I've actually no idea why Nebworth was the one that people picked up on because I blew through stations before Nebworth, but Nebworth <laughs> is the one that became a thing. Um, Quiet Fox is asking Matt, why is the Class sixty six a shed? Because it looks like a shed from the front because of sort of the angled top on it. <laughs> That's the thing that really is. Most nicknames are either because of the sound, because of their reputation, or because of their look. <laughs> <laughs> like the class forty sevens are called Duff because they're in, they were for the initial batch of them weren't any good, um, and the thirty uh, ones some of them got the nickname Toffee Apple because they looked like a toffee apple on a stick from the throttle handle. Oh, that's amazing! I'm going to have to look at that. Right, I need to highlight about by the way that because my my gaming desktop decided um, at a moment's notice, ooh, wouldn't it be a good idea if I do a Steam up Steam update? I'm actually using a dev build on my laptop for this one. So uh, if you see strange things like this thing appear in the top left corner, then I do apologise. But um, thank you, Steam. That's all I can say. All right, unlock the doors. Let's do the door thing. All right, let's get some safety systems on. All right, so we want P to B. We want C for. That's it. There is no L to B on this thing. A couple of people in the chat actually spotted it was a dev build before you said anything, so that's impressive. Oh yeah, they spot them a while away now. Apparently this is giving the wrong destinations. Yeah, this is Halpstrecker destinations. I wonder what's going on there then. Alright, we'll, we'll have a look at that and find out what's going on there. Yeah. Okay. Anything else I need to set up? Can't set that up because apparently it doesn't work. Get some illuminations on. Lovely. Turn the passenger lights on. Don't know the cab light. Turn our lights on. Good. 10, 21, 30. Eight seconds. How do you know how far away from a station you're in life? Route knowledge, Thomas Lee. Route knowledge. Uh, it literally is you ask. You, as a train driver, you learn the route, um, and you'll learn the landmarks of the route and where you are. So you'll know you go. Oh, I'm coming up on this signal, followed by this signal, followed by that tree over there and that lamppost over there. That means I'm coming up on uh, slowing down for this station. I'm blown away by the fact that 
people can remember it all as well. It's incredible. Right. 40 kilometers an hour as we come through to here we've got a uh, slow with expect slow on the pzb on signals so we'll acknowledge that and we're paying at 40 kilometers an hour for the time being this would be why we were reduced speed because we're changing road So um, today, Jamie was giving me a lesson on how to identify the different class of trains. Oh, right. Because uh, in the screenshot competition, uh, people like tell me what the class is, but I've always wondered how they knew. So he was showing me exactly how to find it. And uh, we also went into how to identify the class of steam trains as well, which was quite interesting because mm. I didn't know. That's really cool. We, we, yeah. We, there's, there's some interesting because some trains are so similar and so different. Yeah. Um, so it's actually a little bit, it's quite tricky. Um, I know that a lot of people get confused between trains like a 37 and a 40 because mm -hmm. the front nose is basically identical. It's the length of the train and how many wheels it's got. Um, and in America, where you've got trains, because they use the same cab, uh, they've got like two types of cab in America they've got the standard cab and the comfort cab. Um, so the AC4400 that comes in um, uh, in St. Pat's Grade is a comfort cab, um, which, um, let's get the doors open, uh, and the SD40 is a standard cab, and the GP38 is a standard cab. But you really, the thing, if you just look at a GP38 and an SD40 next to each other, they kind of look like the same train, you know. Yeah, so for many... someone like me, I would struggle, like, knowing the difference if uh, someone hadn't pointed out how to identify them exactly yeah i mean i, I did exactly the same thing where someone pointed out to me well a gp has only ever got um twin axle bogies um and as sd has always got six axle three axle bogies and so you can immediately tell those apart but then you start looking at all the other characteristics like um the number of radio the number of um, fans on the top so a gp38 has got three of sd a gp40 has got four and sd40 has got five there's all sorts of other different ways that you can sort of look at to tell the trains apart okay right. on steam trains i found it particularly challenging trying to like tell the difference between them because uh i like the, i like the pun you incidentally dropped in there by the way because Wait. there is a type of a steam engine called a challenger oh there you go you see happy accident <laughs> Um, Alex Endgame is asking, Matt, do you like DVBR187? Um, I've not seen it yet. Um, I like the look of them. I thought I could accelerate there. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> Did you just ignore the speed limit? No, no, no. I, I, I thought, well, I was clearly wrong, whatever I thought. <laughs> I excite upset PZB. The chat are being really sympathetic. Oh, they, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are being superb. They always are very generous. Yes, that's exactly how they're being right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> has PZB told you off? I believe it has. PZB is always telling me off. <laughs> and then Moggy said, Matt's trip to German safety system, that's never happened before. No, 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 no. That's the first as well. Hmm? Overrunning stations and coming to a screeching halt in the middle of a ride due to driver <laughs> ineptitude. These are things that just don't happen normally. <laughs> can I blame it on being a dev build? No, you cannot. <laughs> uh, what's the best train you both have driven? In the game? Assuming in the I'm game. assuming I'm in the game. Basically, I've, I've, I've not really driven any normal trains, so... Um, I was going to say, yeah, I, I don't think I've driven any real ones. You probably remember. <laughs> I should remember if I had. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Uh, so um, German trains, my favourite ones. Are, my general, my favourite trains always are the old clunkers. Um, I like old trains uh, because they've got a more interesting um, set of things that you do with them, variety of controls and how they operate. Mm -hmm. um, compared to uh, newer ones which tend to be a bit more set it and forget it um, so things like the BR155 and the BR143 for example I love those um, they're great fun to drive uh, in the UK though it's really it's really odd because I kind of go the other way around and I really like the Javelin the, the one that's coming in high, high speed one South Eastern okay. High Speed because it's the local train which is awesome um, it's fast but it also runs on the slow speed lines. It's got different safety systems to learn and, and get familiar with. So it's actually really interesting, varied experience. So I really like that one. So yeah, needless to say, that's that's on my ooh, can't wait list. <laughs> How about yourself? Uh, for me, the one I've enjoyed the most has actually been the Bakerloo one. Um, just, I've enjoyed that whole bit because there's lots of starting and stopping and it's just a lot to do, so I, I like that one. But then I must admit, I did enjoy the 66 last night because it was quite challenging um, mm. for me, anyway, as a beginner. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to trying some more. Yes. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff out there to play with. Uh, Got Liam. any recommendations? Ooh. 101. 101. Okay. The, the Class 101 DMU um, <laughs> is one of those trains that. It's you if you're gonna hate it a lot at first. Um, <laughs> you're gonna hate then, it and then I'm gonna love it. I and hope. then either you're gonna carry on hating it. Okay. Uh, or you will find love with that train. Um, okay. okay. It's I think Sam went through and he actually did be, became his favourite train. Um, yeah, the chat just said it's Sam's train. Yeah, so I, I like the one I want because it's got gears. It's a train with gears. Oh yes, I keep hearing about this one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give this one. I'm gonna have to give it a try. Definitely. But also, it's got manually lapped brakes, which just blow everyone's mind when you first come. The idea, the idea of having a, a tap, essentially, where you put more or less brakes on, uh, rather than just put the brakes at 20% and get 20% braking, like you do on <laughs> modern trains. So it's um, it's different. Um, and uh, again, that's why I like the uh, the 101. So I think that that's one I would definitely recommend you have and you enjoy. That one would be good. Yeah. No, I'll definitely. That's gone on my list. Will the prospect of rebuilding the world based on satellite imagery as flight simulator has done ever be looked into? Dean, have you tried going down and flying at the level of a train in that in that scenery? I think <laughs> you'll find it wouldn't live up to what you're hoping for. Um, but we are looking at other ways of using other resources um, like global mapping at GIS um, to um, make the route building process more optimal. Um, We'll be talking more about that at some point soon. Mm -hmm. right. Do you think the Class 66 will have a horn upgrade because it's quiet and not sharp like the real one? I don't know. Um, that's something to uh, to see whether it goes on Adam's list, I think. Yeah, I think it is. Where are we now? Hagen Westerbauer. All right, I'm gonna have to come out and do a collectible hunt. My schedule will be darned. Right, there's one. Mm -hmm. And I saw another one just over here. No, it wasn't there. It was back up here somewhere. Run quickly! <laughs> there it is. <coughs> oh, I like that. Uh, Binary Run said we need an achievement named after Matt for overshooting. <laughs> See, I like what that idea it? as well. Yeah, I do. What, which one is it you're famous for again? Um, they said it earlier. Nipworth. 
Nebworth. It should be the Nebworth achievement. Oh, see, now that would be class. That would right? be class. Everyone would go and collect that achievement. Yeah. Because I know everybody's yeah, just as bad as me. <laughs> it would have to be a proper Nebworth, though. Now, the definition of a Nebworth is not just overshooting a station. It actually has a precise definition. You have to basically be 10 foot or so away from the front of the platform, doing 80 miles an hour or so, <laughs> and then realise, oops, I should be stopping here. <laughs> there should be absolutely no possibility of stopping even within a mile of putting the brakes on. I agree. That's a Nebworth. That's, yeah. Because That's um, you go Nebworth. blasting through the station and there is just perfect at all. No emergency <laughs> brake is going to give you a Hail Mary oh look it's like I meant to stop here all along yeah the intention of earning a Nebworth is that you're going to fail yeah we one of those you know some games have got negative achievements like you know when you fail in the game in certain things you get um, actually so it'll be like that missed X stops yeah I, I think we should do that I think that'd I be agree. a bit of fun right Kevelsberg nap. <laughs> uh, Liam Edza said, Matt, you were going to say if you know ATP. Oh, yes, ATP. Yes, I know of ATP. Um, and uh, we did a lot of research into it um, in the early days. Um, it didn't make it, unfortunately, into Great Western. Um, but um, I'm assuming you mean the one on the Great Western and the Chilton. At some point, I'd like to get ATP in the game, but uh, it's not on a roadmap anywhere. On which route is Nebworth? That's on East Coast Mainline South. So as you go from um, King's Cross up to Peterborough, um, you go by uh, Welling Garden City, and then you go via Nebworth, and then you get to Stevenage. I think I've got that the right way around. I'm sure the chat will tell you if you haven't. Oh, yes. I've got a, a, a mod that I wrote for um, Train Sim on Twitch, which links the chat so that the chat drive the game by typing chat commands in. So they can oh, set the throttle cool. and set the brakes and so forth. And on one of these instances, my Twitch bot called Twitch Plays Train Sim. And one of the things that um, we did, um, we did a session where we had to run from basically just along that stretch from Welling to Stevenage. Um, someone will have to remind me what train it was. I think it was Flying Scotsman. I had everyone driving. And um, it was absolute mayhem. I mean, normally the Twitch plays train sims, except for a few outliers that decide they want to, um, to game the system. Um, generally, it's amazing how well they do. They don't, it's very rare for them to fail a scenario, um, which is incredible when they're driving sort of 10 seconds lagged in some cases. Um, but with the uh, with this particular one, which became known forevermore as the Battle of Nebworth, basically as the train approached Nebworth, utter war broke out on the chat, with everyone spamming in the commands to make the train stop. Or they they divided themselves almost perfectly into two, with some of them saying no, we should miss the station, and others saying no, no, we should prove we can stop there. And it just became absolute. It was just it was just hilarious. That, hilarious. yeah, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> oh well, that would have been so funny to watch, especially like with it being divided. Oh, Battle of Nebworth was oh, Kuji forty seven with the record forty six. There you go. So thanks, Demon Jam. It is on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> did I meet Jeff Marshall? Yes, I did, Scott. Top bloke, absolutely brilliant. Right, so we're heading for Gevelsburg Hub Farm off uh, one point eight kilometres. maintain the speed limit so I can at least have some semblance of keeping to the time scale. Uh, Scott, reason, which one of you is driving? So Matt is the one driving tonight. Can't you tell? <laughs> absolutely abysmal quality of driving. <laughs> I mean, 
I did a pretty good job last night of living up to the dovetail reputation of slamming on the brakes. So. That's how a lot of train drivers actually drive. It's way, and certainly on commuter stuff, they do they break they come into stations mm -hmm. hard. They've got tight time times to make, so they mm -hmm. they they're, um, they um, they're out of the station um, hard and they're uh, coming into stations quite fast. Keeps it fun. Yep. Oh, I like tight timetables. If it's an easy timetable, then you can just relax and chill back. And where's the fun in that? Right, so let's go and hunt for hunt for the collectibles. Oh, there's one. Nope, there's not one. Oh. I forgot what collectibles there were on this room. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me I'm, I'm on a wild goose chase here with no collectibles. Nope, it's quite, we've got to go. We've got to go. Run quickly. Go faster. Where's <laughs> the run faster button? Oh, this is a dead build. I could hack it, but let's not do that. Right. In. Go. Sit down faster. Right, shut the doors. You're going to be late now. Ah, it's fine. There's nothing new. <laughs> Control zero to run quicker. Oh, that's a good point, Stephen Jam. Does everyone know, by the way? I'm hoping you do. That there is that you can do Control zero um, on the um, on the controller now. Uh, if you click the right joystick, it will do the same thing as Control zero does and jump you back into the cab. So if you find your train running away um, and you can't get back to it, just press Control zero. That's pretty cool. Right, we've got an 80 limit coming up, which means we're not far now from the uh, from having to cross over to do the to rejoin the main line. Scott says Natalie's a better driver. Totally, totally. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Ryan Roy's maps first aid and electricity boxes. Ah, uh, thank you, camera. Is AWS easy? Yes. Alarm go off, press button. Job done. Oh, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, there's no, you don't have to do anything. I mean, in reality, really, you should be looking at what's going on and why the alarm has gone off. But unlike PZB, which is going to, it's you know, it, it gives you a little test every time it wants to put the alarm off. Um, AWS just literally, the alarm goes off. You press the button. That's it. AWS doesn't care anymore. Mhm. It's always gone off for a reason though, generally, so you probably should be looking and finding out why and probably applying brakes. Oh, there you go, it's on. Nope, no more. Nice graffiti. I agree, it is some nice graffiti. Oh, found that one. <laughs> How much time does a route need from first idea to launch? <sighs> I'll probably say four months um, elapsed time. So with lots of people working on it, it takes about four months to actually build the route. And then there's mm -hmm. time taken to prep assets to publish the route onto the various stores. So I don't know, five, six months maybe? Something along those lines. It varies per project. Can it vary on like depending on the complexity of a route? So can some of the longer ones take more time or Yeah, and it's not even necessarily a longer one. Bakerloo is one of the longest projects we've done in quite a long time, even though that was the shortest route we've done in a while. Um, because of the uh, complexities of the um, the underground components of that one. Mm -hmm. um, and getting all the stations. There's a lot more to model on that route than the because you've not got the benefits of fields and scenery and, and, tr and trees and so forth. You've got yeah. um, you're modelling everything in the underground, so that takes a lot more time. So yeah, I mean, the, the more, generally more miles and more stations are kind of the two metrics that can sort of dictate it, but the yeah, underground routes take a lot longer. That makes sense. When you're building a route, do you make the tracks first and then work on the surroundings? So um, the general process for making a route is that um, 
the track laying team will so we'll build we'll do like a, a, a KML uh, of the um, the track plan um, which is all you know which bits of the route are going to be included on the track plan and then the track team will start creating and importing the height data for the various tiles that make up the ground then they'll mm -hmm. lay all the track with all the right gradient profiles and so forth and then once they finish that they'll hand that over to the environment team to start getting um, ground texturing and all the scenic assets placed while some of that had been going on the art environment art team would have um, done a survey of the route and worked out what what models need to be built you know what models have we already got versus what do we now need to get created so then they'll start getting those created in the meantime so there'll be station buildings there'll be unique assets along you know unique buildings along the route um and then the um uh, while that's happening the track and signaling team are back on the route again and what they're doing is they're looking to add in all the track markers signaling the pl putting the signal placeholders down uh, because at that point probably the actual signals themselves the art for them hasn't been built yet so they what they do is they put these big lollipop sticks down so that they can make a working route but without having mm -hmm. final assets on them okay so um and then it all at some point it all hopefully comes together and um gameplay team are involved then in um with the uh, um creating the scenarios and service mode and, and so on and so forth um david knapman's asked where do you get the track data um all sorts it depends what route we're doing where and what there is available but actually there's an awful lot of data available just by following the track on google earth you know it's mm -hmm. it can be that simple um but you can get we also look for gradient profiles um network rail published some um, um some very useful documentation which we uh, which we use as well um which can give gradient profiles and uh, other information so we use that and that information is available in other parts of the world as well in different forms um, mm -hmm. so um, we look for whatever we can and sometimes the best we've got is a is a really old hand-drawn diagram that we found and that we just have to work from that if that's what there is oh, um, wow. but um, the uh, more often than not there's actually good data available um, if you look in the right places and so it must be challenging if you didn't have much <laughs> It becomes a lot more difficult. Um, it does become a lot more difficult to try and um, to do it, but um, the team have become quite good. Because the thing is, you can, if you can't um, get the information, but there is a cab ride, you, you might be able to get some sensation of how the route goes goes up and down, even if you don't know the exact gradients. Um, so you can reverse engineer bits of information about the route from various different sources. Although, obviously, we try and work from diagrams wherever we can makes life so much easier if anything else mm -hmm. the binary man asked an interesting question have you ever had to cancel a project because you couldn't get the data you wanted not because we can get the data we wanted we have cancelled projects um, for various reasons like licensing uh, mm -hmm. we did have one project I can't name um, that was 60% finished um, that um, had to be um, cancelled very sadly be a bit smarter about that these days <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was um the, the team were not in a happy place for a little while after that yeah yeah someone's saying gutting to lose that amount yeah, of work it was, it was. yeah but it happens you know licensing is important definitely No, we tend to be, um, do a lot of research. We spend quite a lot of time researching what we're going to make before we go in. And maybe, you know, since that was that was a long time ago now, that one. Um, and um, these days we go into a project um, with, a, with two things, really. One with a team that are actually really good. They've done a lot of this stuff before. So if they, if they don't have information, they're actually quite good at figuring it out um, and, um, and coming up with something which is a passable guesstimate um, they're also really good at finding that information um, and we figure that out fairly well early in advance before we actually even get a route approved to build it we'll have a good idea of roughly where we're, where we're going to get the information from to make it uh, or if we're going to have any major challenges mm -hmm. 
We went into Bakerloo line, not 100% sure where we are going to get all the data from, but it all came through in the end. That must be reassuring. Yeah. But we went into it with a plan that, well, if we don't find the data, this is how we're going to do it. This is what we're going to end up with. And, you know, that was that was a good baseline and we, we, we were able to do better than that. So, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. It works out. But that's the key thing is going into projects with your eyes open. Yeah. Yeah. Dostos. Natalie, do you know if the Canadian National AC 440 CW has been something? Oh my gosh, the chat's scrolling. Let's have a look. So the team at Trinity World 2 has thought of about or mentioned. I don't have any information on that, I'm afraid. Um, I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know if Matt knows anything, but um, there's been no mention on my end. Um, we've talked about all sorts of different things, to be honest. Um, yep. And I'm not sure an AC4400 would really be a good fit for the only Canadian route we've got, which is the, the Oakville, because that's more of a, a short... Um, switching route um, and you don't really use giant um, six axle locos for that um, mm -hmm. so um, I'm not sure it'd be a greatest fit for that route but um, maybe it's run through power on another route I don't know yeah. it's not something we've actively talked about now yeah. right let's move on can are the new train? preserved collection out yet? So phase five, I believe we're on now, isn't out just yet. Um, yeah, phase five should, is next. Yeah, should hopefully be with you on Thursday, I believe. But um, we'll see. Schwelm West. Would it be our 420 be possible for Munich Augsburg? I know of a third party developer who is uh, wanting to work on a BR420 for Munich Augsburg. Um, so, um, maybe. I'd love to see a 420. They are amazing. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite um, DME, EMUs to drive on TS1 because they've just got this really interesting old school sound to them. They're all grindy. Um, and again, it's got that old. That old sort of um, feel to it rather than being a, a modern train that just feels like it's gliding along the track, which is great for passengers and sort of great mm -hmm. for, for drivers in reality, but I feel it's less character. I like character. It's a generic expression that can be used to just for be abused for anyone's purpose at all. Has that train got character? <laughs> Have I driven on the southeastern high speed yet? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, that. The bigger font on the dead build, is it coming to the shipping version? Yes. <clears throat> mm, that'd be good. I don't know when, but yes. <clears throat> we're, actually, we're actually talking about it today. The UI, the art, the UI artist had a pass over the UI and made a load of different tweaks to various things. Nice. Is this a back five, Henry? No, nearly. It's red and not steam, and there's no fives, and it's not black. Um, but otherwise than that, yes. Why is Munchen spelt differently in TSW2 or Train Simulator? So train Simulator generally followed the English spelling of um, German cities, whereas Train Sim World generally follows the German spelling. Um, mm -hmm. So it's Munich in TS1 and München, which is the German name for the city uh, on uh, on TS World. Was so like Rhein-Ruhr-Ost and, and um, Kohn-Aachen. 
Yeah, I need to practice my pronunciations because uh, at the moment it's still a bit painful. <laughs> my pronunciation skills are as good as my train station um, station stopping skills. So excellent. Uh, I, I've uh, I've always <laughs> brought nations to war uh, and families to uh, to uh, uh, to fists uh, with some of my amazing pronunciations. <laughs> I mean, I should really do Oops. better as well with the pronunciation because obviously I live in Wales and the amount of places people mispronounce here is unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> Apparently I missed a speed drop. Oh. oh the train's decided yeah. I should stop and think about what I've done. You're being told off again. I'm being told off again. and I looked over to chat for just a moment. Yes, I'm and blaming chat. Yeah. I actually learned how challenging that was last night. Like trying to drive and trying to read chat. And trying to pay attention to the game is just hard. It is hard, and um, when you've got um, a little tiny post in the in uh, that goes past you in the blink of an eye, and yeah. if you don't respond to with a uh, page down, the train gets <laughs> all uppity. Uh, the chat are actually saying, "Don't blame them for your fails." I am going to blame you for my fails. It's the chat. See See, this like... is why they're not nice to you when you fail. <laughs> no, no, I believe them not being nice came first. <laughs> I'm blaming chat for me blaming chat now. Yes, I am. This is <laughs> blameception. <laughs> blameception. I saw that it needed to be dealt with. Oh, I love the fact that I can get out of trains and run around. It's just <laughs> It's one of my favourite <laughs> things. What came first, bad chat or Matt's bad driving? Right. Of course. <clears throat> What's the line that goes above? That's a yard. Um, so if I just fly up here. Oh, we're in the tunnel. There we go. So this is this yard over here um, that goes across. And it is. Oh, hang on, hang on. Just realised I'm in uh, monitoring, so it's going to get well uppity with me. So this yard here that comes <laughs> across here and joins over there. So this is a container terminal um, here. Mm -hmm. um, is that line drivable? Yes, it is, Liam. Right. Release from monitoring. Don't control me, system. Is a 50 limit coming up, so I should probably you know, do that. Backlin said, at least you're not flying through stops. I've not net worthed anything so far, but the night <laughs> is young. There's still time. <laughs> There's a steep climb to the yard. Yes. Is this a better or worse performance than a Twitch Plays train sim? The jury is out on that, Mitchell. The jury is out. Where are we going to? Wuppertal Oberbarman. Oh, yes. We're, now that we're west of the um, of that yard, mm -hmm. what we find we come up against, uh, come up to here on the right-hand side of us is the uh, Schweberbarman. Uh, of which that building just passing on the right is actually the uh, um, one of the stations of the Shababa Bahn, um, the Hank the Suspended Railway. We'll see that more clearly shortly. Uh, Natalie, what route do you want to see in Transimal? I'd like to see some Mersey Rail because uh, my grandparents lived in the Wirral, so been on a lot of the Mersey Rail, so that's. That's what I want to see. That would be fascinating, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's go and have a look at Schweberbahn, which is this thing here, this big green suspended thing. Um, if we're really, really good and really, really lucky, yay! Train! Oh, cool! Look at it go! Yep. And that follows us pretty much all the way now. And it's really, it's a major feature of the area. That's brilliant.
Right, we're off to Wuppertal Barman. No kind of strange piece of B up between us, so we can accelerate. <laughs> Do you mean the um, Schweberbahn steam trains unlimited? Um, in reality, they normally are two car unit. See where it is on the right hand side there. Um, they're normally a two car unit, but the uh, we weren't able to represent that properly, so we just did a one car unit. Oh, one thing I did yesterday that I think was pretty good was my kernel count. Like, nice. the first one I ever did, I accidentally, um, like, drove into a bridge. Um, this but, happens. Yeah, you know. But yesterday's one, I was, pretty, I was pretty chuffed with that one, I must admit. It does good getting multiple layers of parallax going like that. Mm -hmm. put the kernel cam as a camera mode in the game so that everyone can get their kernel cam on. That'd be great, wouldn't it? The doors. Any progress adding mouse support on PS4? Um, not at the moment, Alex. The, um, Is there a donkey on this route? Probably. Do I know where it is? Don't know. Oh, BR143. Ooh. Yeah, that's the door. And off we go. Unterbarmen. Uh, so someone asked about passenger volumes between console and PC. Yes, there is a difference. Uh, console um, has a much lower maximum number of passengers uh, in the world compared to uh, uh, PC. I can't remember what the numbers are exactly, but if you're if you're thinking you're seeing that, you're not imagining it. <laughs> Consoles aren't as powerful as PCs. It's fairly straightforward maths. One point two kilometers to Utabam. I like this section of the route. It's just I like the variety on this route as well, um, because you've got this. This is quite an interesting sort of um, almost built-up section. You feel like you're going through somewhere built up. Um, yeah. Whereas the branch line was uh, a bit different. And then, of course, if you've got the freight trains or if you've got the um, other packs and you can run the Dostos, then um, you've got the. Uh, you can run on the south line with the passenger trains and the freight trains as well, which is a faster journey. You like the trees, did you buy and run? Good man. <laughs> right. You can't run the Dostos on either loco. Yes, I have got something I'm working on um, that allows you to run the Dostos as well. It fixes that so that trains reverse out of portals instead of always going forwards out of portals. This is an example. I was talking about custom assets that need buildings. Mm -hmm. Things like that building here would yeah. have been definitely a custom asset that was built. Probably some of this was as well. So some of, they might have added extra um, types of houses intermixed mm -hmm. with some of the existing ones we've got from other German routes. You know, it's it's these kinds of things that, when they're doing um, a review or a survey of a route, you need to work out what what can you see. The skyline is the biggest thing to look at. What can you see on the skyline? Because you need to recreate the skyline. Mm 
Mhm. Wuppertal. No PCB madness, so we can keep going. 1.6 kilometers. <laughs> What? I don't even know why that happened. Uh oh. I don't even know why that happened. Did the miss... chat tell you why that happened? Yeah, why that happened? What did I miss? What didn't he do? Was this a warning? It must have been the warning for that 60, but I only just went past that. <laughs> mm. I think the train is trolling me at this point. Mr. 90, Currently but you don't acknowledge 90. <laughs> Oh gosh. So now I'm in monitoring. Boo, monitoring. <laughs> it's just like being put on the naughty step. That's what monitoring is. It's brilliant. <laughs> Didn't you watch the tutorial? I should do that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Might help. limit at that point. I'm still under a thousand hertz so I can't release yet. Oh well I'll be overtaken. What's all this about? What? Get back behind me. <laughs> sure, Q jumping. Right? <laughs> It's kind of fun watching them go past them. Oh, I love it. It's one of my yeah. favourite things about Hubschack or Rhine Roar is because you get loads of opportunities for um, parallel running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no AFB on this thing, uh, Vitro. Or speed set. Or whatever variation of AFB. On a hot streak tonight for fails? Absolutely, Derek. I agree. I mean, you have to show what happens, though, when you get it wrong or else nobody knows. This is why I'm doing it, actually. This is all intentional. It's entirely yeah. intentional. It's a learning exercise. Exactly. <laughs> and then just to finish it off, it gives me a signal that's utter nonsense. GG, game! <laughs> <clears throat> Two white lights. What's that all about? Get that on Adam's list. Right. Uh, try packing for my BR363. Will this affect RSN's quality? Knowing you have all the DLCs for this road you play on PS4. Uh, I shouldn't do now. There isn't much running, there isn't much memory. The memory problem, there really isn't much of a memory issue on uh, RSN. In fact, I don't think there's any memory problem on RSN. Is Roadrunner in this game? If you're in a talent, if you're in a uh, Taurus, the BR182, you can um, double click the throttle and you'll get the meep meep. Or officially the beep beep for, for trademark reasons close the doors I think we've got one more stop yep we'll put our stein back Uh, can I repeat what I said about the Dostos earlier? <clears throat> Someone remind me what I said about the Dostos earlier. Do you mean about running them on this route? Um, yeah, so it is um, It is a uh, thing that I've been working on. Um, I don't know when or if it will make it out, but I have been working on um, an upgraded timetable for this route, which, amongst other things, fixes the Dostos so that you can drive with the Dostos. <laughs> what I'll probably do is pass that over into Adam's team. Uh, so that it can go on their list for reviewing whether they want to get that into the uh, into the bug list. Mm -hmm. 
Scott Reason asked when's Natalie driving the Bakerloo line. So that is actually planned for the future, so you're just going to have to wait and see. Any, so JMB, any plans for dynamic day night so you can start a route and watch the sunset or rise? You can already do that. Ooh. There is a the the the, type, the position of the sun is calculated based on your location in the world, um, and the um, uh, the uh, and also the time of day and the time of year. So um, the yeah. sun should be in, and the moon should all be in the right places um, at any given time of the day, and they are moving all the time. Mm -hmm. But obviously you've got to wait. It's eleven o'clock in the morning. We've got a little bit of what time to go before it gets dark. Um, just a bit. Just a bit. Probably not subject for this stream. Maybe we'll do it. <laughs> we'll have a twelve-hour stream at some other point where we sit and watch the sun. Um, but no, if you if you start a session at dusk, it'll go dark during the course of that session as the sun goes down. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really amazing what um, the the engineering team did there with um, how they represent all of that stuff. I mean, is it possible to do a twelve-hour stream? Like, like, not stream, a uh, route, if you wanted to. Like, could you play for twelve hours straight? Oh yeah, something like Bakerloo Line, for example. It's an end-to-end. -end. You just go up and down all day, and wow. uh, and uh, yeah, you you start your session in the morning and see the sun come up, and if you keep going, you'd see the sun go back down again. Because you'd be knackered. So much fun. Well, so we should do an all day stream for charity, maybe. Yes. <laughs> They're always good fun. Matt's like, yes, sign me up now. <laughs> I used to do four, uh, 24 hour streams for charity. That's awesome. They are too painful. These days I do them in two chunks and end up doing about 30 hours instead, but. Um, <laughs> 15 hours and sleep and 15 hours is much easier than 24 hours streaming in one go. <clears throat> got a little bit of time left, so we'll just have a wander around. I don't think we've got time to start a new one. Sure. Let's go talk to some passengers. they got nothing to say. I've, I've talked to them and they, they so just stand rude. there. I know. Anyone who's felt they had like shock from being on my train. Maybe they do. Maybe they're concussed, like yeah. heartbreaking, you know. But you know, clutching onto something. <laughs> or maybe they're just like really afraid. Like, oh god, that's the lunatic that was driving the train. Get away. Should be looking at phones. I agree. They should be looking at phones. I said this yeah. in the stream last night. Like, looking at phones, reading newspapers, um, headphones <laughs> in. Yeah, this should be Avoiding definitely Avoiding all forms of eye contact. Oh, I saw a little train down here. I'm going to go a wandering. Oh, yeah, dovetail live sight on the mobile phones. I'd love that, you know, like if they were looking at their phones and then they could actually see. That would be mega. Like on the road map. Are you intending on introducing a COVID mode? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's escapism. Escape to fun and happiness. <laughs> if you want the brutal harshness of reality, you can open your eyes and look outside. Ah, it's a steel train. Shims wagons. Ooh. Showing you know what we should do if it's a steel train. What, 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 what? Well, it's, it's in the name. We'll steal it. Oh. Are you stealing a train? Me? No. No, definitely not. Thief! I deny any accusations of wow. um, inappropriate um, movement. Judging train. you right now for stealing a train. I'm sorry, I can't go anywhere because I've got a red light, so we just have to sit here. So <laughs> we are rolling now because I put it in gear and I put it in forwards and then didn't apply brakes. Yeah, Simmons wagons. Oh, hello. Ooh. I think that's my train. Bye, my um, train. Nothing, your oh, Bye, train. Off it goes. 
Some, yeah, someone stole your train. You stole their train. They're like, fine, I'm going to steal your train. Exactly. See how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's a... I think... Uh, that might be behind us because we rolled backwards. Our signal is actually a little bit further up. Um, oh no, it's actually right there. Oh wow, that's close. I often thought it'd be cool if you could make one of these screens show the Twitch stream. So while you're playing the game, you can watch the stream. Why is the pink cursor back? Because I'm using my development laptop. Um, because my desktop decided, oh, you know what you need? You need an update to Train Sim World. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will memory issues on console improve on the next generation? Well, they've got more memory. Yep. So, Theoretically, it should. It's difficult difficult to say anything with any kind of um, firmness until yeah. there is a next generation to actually play the game with uh, and see how it goes. But um, if you look just purely based on the numbers, there is more. Um, there's more memory to play with on the bigger con on the newer consoles. So I am hopeful that of great things. They look like a pair of really, yeah. really good machines. Yeah, I'm really excited to get one. I still haven't decided which way I'm going to go, if I'm honest. Both See, that I've good. always been a PlayStation person, so I'm just going to stick with my theme of PlayStations. Uh, so I've always been an Xbox person, but my PS4 is my first PlayStation, uh, mm. other than the PS3, which I frankly disliked. Yeah, yeah, um, I can see why. But the PS4 has been such a good experience. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the Xbox 360, they really nailed it. The Xbox mm. One never quite felt as polished, um, but um, they are both, they're both really good machines though. And One X is yeah. amazing. And I think it's safe to say for anybody that buys either, they're probably going to enjoy the machine. Like, they're, they're both probably going to be very good. Oh god, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's a wrong decision to be made, which is really exciting. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. And I'm curious to see how the game will run on them as well, because, like, you know, they're more powerful, so it should be smoother. Whether it is or not is another question, so it's really interesting to see. We'll have to do a stream with them eventually oh, yeah. at some point, well, showing well, off. We, we have to. I think, I think yeah. there will be, there will be much demand for such things. <laughs> I can um, see there being a lot of demand for it, definitely. We can move it in 30 seconds. Ooh. Were there many, any big locomotive for EMD? I don't think there's anything on the roadmap uh, at the moment. That's all the stuff that's been announced at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is the suggestions for them, though. So if there's stuff that is not already been mentioned that uh, you've thought of, then uh, by all means shout about it that's good nice visibility is amazing that's why I'm training in the background well, that's a good shot we should get the light there it is hey. Did you notice that in the train on Isle of Wight there's map space? I did, because when I was driving it, the chat told me to go looking for you, like a where's Wally hunt. <laughs> and I found you. What happens is that you take this train and the minute it starts moving it all turns to German fruitcake. 
Because it's become stolen. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll get my code. <laughs> Natalie, have you learned how to use the headlights properly yet? Why have not? <laughs> I always forget to put them on. Drive it like you stole it. <laughs> No, no, I aren't. I... <clears throat> it's probably a good point to end the stream. This was intended to end the stream. That was completely intentional. Shut up. Stop complaining. Oh, that's so annoying. You planned that so well. <laughs> such a good thing. That was, that was all, because, you know, we haven't got time to do a whole journey, so <laughs> clearly it was intentional. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I don't know if anybody else is. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, that's, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Thank you for joining us, Natalie. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hope everybody has a lovely evening. Yes. Um, all right, we'll catch, when's the next stream? The next stream will be Tuesday. Um, I'm not sure who that is right now off the top of my head. We did, well, Adam was this week, wasn't it? Yeah, so, it might be me. It might be me on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, it's a non-roadmap stream. Uh, not a promise. Tuesday. It's just a meme. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. All right, folks, um, come along for the next stream on Tuesday. And uh, in the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, and we'll see you later on. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.